Okay, so I'm just going to quickly um, start by going over a little bit of the modifications from last month because I did not get projects from every student. Really quickly, what we did was we drew overlapping mountains and you could either print out the template and then just have your student color them in or you could draw it for them and have them trace over it or you could indicate with your finger and have them trace um, or prompt them verbally, okay? After that, what we did was we used crayons, chalk, or um, watercolors and we just kind of used them to color an interesting sky. Now, for this lesson, we are discussing the warm colors and the cool colors so in the sky, I'm putting the, cool, the warm colors. So red, orange, yellow, and pink. And then you can either use a tissue or your finger and kind of blend that all together, which is fun for the kids. Less is more with chalk, um, but less chalk is less mess too. So, so less is also less, all right? Um, if you don't have chalk, that's fine. Um, just use crayons or colored pencils. If you want to use watercolors, that is terrific as well. Um, I'm going to, for today's lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to use watercolors, which I mentioned in last, last, month's, um, in last month's video. So yeah, we have um, three different grounds, like in the main video. It is important that you watch the main video or your child watches the main video just to get some of the content that... Um, we're learning about, but we are going to really, really focus on foreground is at the bottom and things are big. Background is at, is at the top of the ground and things are a little bit smaller. When you are painting, it is a good idea when, when we have um, students that struggle with um, impulse control and are, are struggling with what colors to choose. Once they decide what they're using, I would take a piece of tape and tape off the colors that they, they shouldn't be using. So in the sky, I use the warm colors, but down here in the land, I'm going to be using the cool colors. So I'm going to be using blue, green, purple, and turquoise. So I'm just going to be filling in these mountains with those colors, which should be fun. Again, if you choose to, you can use crayon, chalk, colored pencil to color in your mountains. Okay, if, you cho if your child chose to do a cool colored sky, that's great too. Then just do a warm color ground, okay? Okay, so now I have my sky and my ground, warm colors in one part, cool colors in the other. So the meat and potatoes of this lesson is actually using organic shapes and geometric shapes to show near space, which is the foreground, and far away space, which is the background. For this group of students, I'm only requiring those two spaces. You do not need to worry about the middle ground. So we have a couple of options. Um, if you want to, you can you know cut things out for your child. So let's say I have this building and then I have this building. And then say, which building would go close, which is the bigger building, and then have your child place that building. Which one, it, where would we put the far away building? This is far away. After having a discussion about, you know, this is far, this is close, right? And then, and you can combine shapes too. So that's part of our, our lesson as well is, is putting shapes together to make more complex things, okay? Again, for organic shapes, so the, I believe, I mean, we can trace those shapes and the kids can cut those shapes. You could also draw organic shapes or pre-cut organic shapes. And again, close up far away. And the last option, and this might be fun as well, or you can combine any of these, is to kind of pre-cut some um, organic shapes or you can find some building shapes and pre-cut those out of um, magazines or maybe look through magazines together, um, look on the internet, print things out. If you don't have glue, then just place them and snap a picture and send them to me. But again, we want the big geometric shapes and organic shapes. So I'm looking for both in the foreground and smaller organic shapes and geometric shapes in the background. And if your child wants to add anything, so then after that you could actually, you know, take 
a colored pencil or a marker and add some leaves around this or maybe some maybe some doors and windows um, you can your kids can get as creative as you want and I really do encourage that okay reach out with any questions or if you need some modifications or you're running into um, any kind of struggles and I'm here to help I cannot wait to see what the kids can do